If you're looking to buy a stacked NBA 2K account with max badges and more, visit SportsTMB.com. He has been in the community for years and has hundreds of reviews. Click the first link in the description to get your account today. Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it on the channel already, with many more like it to come in the future, so subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd really appreciate it. Also, drop a like on the video so it does better in YouTube's algorithm. Today, I finally wanted to get around to putting out my top 50 players of all time. And before I start, I think it would be good for me to list off my criteria for ranking all-time talent. Of course, this is all subjective, everyone's, and I mean everyone's top 50 list has something different about it. It's okay if you disagree with me, all I ask is that you don't be a dick about it, which is probably too much of an ask. For me, and I feel for most people, all-time rankings is a mixture of both the talent of the player as well as what they accomplish throughout their career. It's not always a 50-50 split, sometimes there are players that were insane talents but they didn't win shit in their careers, and there were players that were not all that talented but won multiple championships because of the circumstances they were in. So I guess I give more of an edge to talent over accomplishment, but I guess yeah, I'll put it this way. When I view two players as relatively close in talent, I'll rank the one who's more accomplished over the one that's not. For example, Isaiah Thomas and CP3, I'd say both are pretty close talent-wise, but Thomas won two championships, so I have him over Paul. And if there's a player who was crazy talented but didn't really accomplish anything, I'll put them here. And if there's a player that wasn't all that talented but won a lot of championships, I'm not gonna put them here. Like, Robert Ory is not on my top 50 list. If there is a player who is more accomplished, but someone is ahead of them, it's simply because I think they were so much more talented that it makes up that difference. So that's my standard. There might be a few times in this list where I make some exceptions, but that's generally what I'm going by. Also, I'm titling this video something like updating the NBA's 50 greatest, because if you didn't know, the NBA put out an official 50 greatest players list. And because of that, once I have listed off everyone, I'm going to mention what players did not make the cut and which players were added 24 years later. Coming in at number 50, I have Tracy McGrady. He obviously fits into the category of players that were really talented but didn't win anything. T-Mac, in my opinion, is one of probably the 30 or so best talents in NBA history, but with him not winning a ring or an MVP in his career, oftentimes with no one to blame but himself, he barely scrapes by on this list. At 49, I have Robert Parrish. Parrish, I feel, is pretty damn underrated, especially when talking about those successful Celtics teams of the 80s. Parrish is not given enough credit for their success. I don't know why so many people think there is a huge separation between him and McHale as Bird's sidekicks. Parrish was a better rebounder, better defender in my opinion, and his point production was comparable. McHale was better, especially more versatile offensively, but I don't think it's as big of a separation as people make it out to be. 48, I have Dave Cowens, the center that followed Bill Russell on the Celtics. He consistently brought in 20 and 15, was also a damn good passer for a big man. He won two championships alongside John Havlicek in 74 and 76. At 47, we have an example of talent over accomplishment because I have Dwight Howard here ahead of Dave Cowens. Even though Cowens is more accomplished, I think Dwight was a good bit more talented talented. Also, I think the 70s were the worst era in the history of the NBA, and I'll probably make a video on that at some point. So I think most of the good players from that era end up being overrated. Dwight, though, a three-time Defensive Player of the Year, one of the greatest defensive centers ever. He averaged 20 and 14 for his prime, and even though his career was ultimately a disappointment, I definitely think it's fair to have him in the top 50. At 46, I have Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, as a talent like T-Mac, 
I think Giannis is top 30 and even top 20 all time already. But as of right now, he only has one MVP to his name. No real worries though. Guy will be much higher on this list when it's all said and done. At 45, I have Rick Barry, which if you know anything about him, that feels way too low. However, with him and many other players on this list, a good percentage of his career came in the ABA, not the NBA. And this is a top 50 NBA players of all time list, so I'm only taking that percentage of his career into consideration here. Barry in the ABA averaged 30 points on 48% shooting. In the NBA, he averaged 25 points on 45% shooting, and that is excluding the later years of his career. But Barry is one of the best scorers ever. He led the Warriors to a title in 1975. He's also known as one of the biggest dicks in NBA history, and he shot granny free throws where, for his career, he shot 89% and led the league in free throw percentage multiple times. At 44, I have Patrick Ewing. He is an example of great talent, little accomplishment. He's probably a top 30 talent all time, but he didn't win much. At 43, I have Ray Allen, who is interesting to rank because he, earlier in his career, he was an amazing talent, but he didn't win much. It was with the Celtics and later as a role player with the Heat that he got his rings. So this is where I felt comfortable placing him. I don't know if I could put him any higher with those circumstances. At 42, I have Reggie Miller. Now, prime Ray Allen, I would take over Reggie. But Reggie had much better longevity in terms of his peak, and he stepped it the fuck up in the playoffs. For his prime, he averaged 21 points, but for his prime in the playoffs, he averaged 24 points on better splits. At 41, I have George Gervin, a very good scorer. Unfortunately, a lot of that scoring came in the ABA, so that's why he is this low, that and the fact that he never accomplished much. At 40, I have Scottie Pippen, which is probably a good bit lower than a lot of people have him. But the thing is, Scotty is an all-time great defender. He was a great fast break scorer, but his half-court offense was very often questionable, and he does not get called out for that enough. It wasn't bad, I would say, but it also wasn't good, and I think that's a big knock on his actual talent. At 39, I have Paul Pierce, who, unlike Pippen, was a talented half-court scorer. I can't stand the guy as an analyst. I wish he would just go away but I can't deny the dude was an absolute bucket. 38, I have Julius Irving. Again, for a lot of people, this is a low ranking, but the first five years of his career came in the ABA. His numbers in the NBA overall were 22 points a game, seven rebounds, four assists, and 1.8 steals on 50% shooting, which are good numbers, but they're not crazy. He's still an iconic player, and he was a key part of one of the most underrated championship teams in the history of the league, but for his actual NBA career, I can't put him any higher than this. At 37, I have Kevin McHale, one of the greatest post scorers of all time. The second best player on those great Celtics teams, a good defender. I don't think he was that much better than Parrish, but he certainly was better. 36, I have Dominique Wilkins. I don't have much to say about him. He was very talented, did not accomplish much. I kind of have him in the same vein as Tracy McGrady. He just had more longevity. He averaged 28 points and seven rebounds on 47% shooting for over a decade. T-Max Prime was really only barely seven years and he was less efficient. At 35, I have Walt Frazier. And admittingly, I don't spend much of my free time watching Walt Frazier highlights. I don't know a whole lot about him. But from all accounts, he was a great point guard. He was a part of the championship 70s Knicks. If you think he's slightly lower or higher, fair enough, I'm not gonna argue with you. At 34, I have Allen Iverson. At the beginning of this year, I made a video on why I thought Iverson was overrated, and I still stand by it, but I also think I was pretty unfair to him in that video for the most part. AI is still one of the greatest scorers ever and easily the greatest normal-sized man to ever play basketball. And before you freak out, 6'3 isn't a normal size. At 33, I have John Havlicek. One of my favorite things about making this list was that it made me do some research on some players I knew little about. 
And with John, looking back at him, I feel he is one of the most underrated players in NBA history. He was originally one of the many good players on the Bill Russell Celtics, but he also helped the Celtics win two championships post Bill Russell in 74 and 76, winning finals MVP in 74. He was a really good two-way player and a great playmaker. 32, I have Gary Payton, another player that I feel is pretty damn underrated. He was a great scorer and playmaker, and of course, an amazing defensive player. Possibly the greatest defensive point guard ever. He is also the only point guard to win defensive player of the year. And I don't think he is given enough credit for giving the greatest team of all time, at least at that point, a run for its money in the finals. 31, Russell Westbrook. I have gotten the label of a Westbrook hater, and for the most part, that's warranted because I pretty much only ever criticize the guy. But I can't deny that the dude is a great talent. He's also going to be very high on a lot of all-time lists when his career is over. At 30, I have Steve Nash. You may or may not have noticed at this point that Jason Kidd and John Stockton have not been on this list, and spoiler alert, they're not going to be because in general, I feel all true point guards are incredibly overrated. But Nash was easily the best of those three in my opinion, and a much better scorer than the other two. And I believe that utilized correctly, he would have been so much better than Stockton and Kidd utilized correctly. If you wanna hear my thoughts on why true point guards are overrated, you can go check out that controversial video. I didn't put it out that too long ago. At 29, I have Clyde the Glide Drexler. Yet another case of a very talented player who just didn't get the accolades he had the potential to get as a first option. He couldn't get it done versus Jordan. Then again, who could? But he also did win a championship in Houston. 28, we have Elvin Hayes, who is an example of a player who filled up the box score, but was not all that flashy or outspoken about it. So he's pretty forgotten in NBA history. He helped the Washington Bullets win their first and only championship, and he was a walking 20 and 12 for nearly two decades. At 27, I am putting James Harden here. This is really the highest I can comfortably rank him with the lack of playoff success he's had. He's probably a top five offensive player ever. His numbers are ridiculous, but thus far, he hasn't had the success to be higher than the guys that I have above him. 26, I have Elgin Baylor, one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. He had a three year streak from 1960 to 1963, where he averaged 35 points per game. He was also an insanely good rebounder for a small forward in that same three year streak. Baylor averaged 17 rebounds a game, including a year where he averaged 20, also a good playmaker. Unfortunately, he never won a championship because him, as well as Jerry West, consistently ran into Bill Russell Celtics in the finals, but still a damn good talent. 25, I have CP3 as a talent. He would be higher than this, but thus far he has yet to win a championship or an MVP and he's not gonna get the MVP at this point. 24, I have Isaiah Thomas, who is more accomplished than Paul, which is why I have him slightly above him, even though I believe Paul was a decent bit better. 38, I have Carl Malone, who is a pedophile, so I'm not gonna say anything nice about him. Fuck Carl Malone. 22 is Charles Barkley. I don't think enough people are fully aware of just how good Charles Barkley was. For his prime, he averaged 22 points, 12 rebounds, and 4 assists a game on 55% shooting. A great playmaker for a 4, dominant in the post, and obviously a great rebounder. At 21, I have David Robinson, who's actually kind of similar to Charles Barkley, weirdly. He is just bigger and actually in shape. He was also a great rebounder, post scorer, and passer for a big man. At his peak, he averaged 30 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks. He was, however, unlike Barkley, an amazing defensive player and one of the best rim protectors ever. We are officially in the top 20, and at 20, I have Kawhi Leonard, who, when it's all said and done, could very well be in the top 10 if health permits. All-time great defender, amazing scorer, and we all saw what he did in Toronto. Not much else to say. At 19, I have Jerry West, who is a very polarizing player. A lot of people have him top 10. Many have him around the 40s. I am obviously in between. West was a great scorer, a pretty damn good passer, and a good defender. However, he is also known as one of the biggest losers in NBA history with him being 1-9 and nine in the finals. 
18 is Dirk Nowitzki, who completely changed the game as a shooting four in the NBA. One of the greatest scorers ever, he had one of the best championship runs ever, won an MVP in 2007, we all know what Dirk was about. 17 is Kevin Garnett, who I rank over Dirk simply because of the defense. KG wasn't the first option on the championship that he did win, unlike Dirk, but Garnett was arguably just as good offensively in his prime, while being one of the best defenders ever. Next, I have Oscar Robertson. The guy averaged a 30-point triple-double on nearly 50% shooting for the first five years of his career. I have him over Garnett and Dirk because his numbers were just ridiculous. Number 15, I have Dwayne Wade. Wade seems to be ranked in pretty random areas for a lot of people. It's a wide spectrum, usually ranging from 13 at the highest to like 30th at the lowest. But I have him this high because I think peak Dwayne Wade was just a ridiculous player. And his 2006 finals run, in my opinion, is probably the greatest playoff performance ever. That Heat team in retrospect really was not that good, and he carried that team to its first championship in franchise history. 14, I have Moses Malone. A three-time MVP, one of the greatest rebounders ever, a damn good post player. He averaged 26 and 15 from 78 to 85. He led the 83 Sixers to the third championship in franchise history. At 13, I have Kevin Durant. At worst, the second best scorer of all time with an above average all around game. Like him or not, KD is fucking great. 12, I have Stephen Curry. He completely changed the game. The guy was the foundation of a Dynasty Warriors team. He has three rings, two MVPs, and his season in 2016 is the best offensive season of all time in my book. 30 on 50, 45, 90 is just nuts. If you don't think that Curry is the number two point guard ever, you are just wrong. And no, this jersey does not make me biased. I bought that on impulse. I just like those classic Warriors jerseys. Number 11, I have Wilt Chamberlain. Learning about Wilt really kind of spoiled the legend of the guy for me. As a teammate, his motivations, he was ridiculously talented and physically gifted as a player, but he was also very selfish, not the hardest worker, and was very often the reason his team lost, not the other way around. And I think it's very telling that Wilt's box score stats did not continue contribute to winning, he only won his championships when he reduced his production. So as for why I would have a guy who averaged 50 points in a season not in the top 10, it's because it wasn't really leading to winning. Now finally we are at the top 10, and starting off at number 10, I have Hakeem Olajuwon. The reason Hakeem is not higher is that his peak was relatively short. He had many good years before 94 and 95 when he won his two championships and a few good years after, but his true prime where he was the clear second best player of his era wasn't as long as you might think. At 9, I have Shaq, the most dominant player in NBA history. He led the Lakers to three championships, won one as a sidekick to Dwayne Wade. He could have been higher here, but unfortunately he didn't put in enough work to get there. 8, I have Tim Duncan. As I pointed out in a recent video, Duncan gets discredited way too often because of the Spurs organization, when the Spurs would not have been shit without Tim Duncan, not the other way around. Possibly the greatest defender at his position ever, great rebounder, post player, and passer. He is 5 for 6 in the finals, and he won two MVPs. It's kind of insane to think that he would have the same finals record as Michael Jordan, if not for that Ray Allen shot. Also, other than a lockout year, Duncan was not on a Spurs team that didn't win 50 or more games for his entire career. At 7, I have Kobe Bryant. Now would probably be a good time to mention that 8 through 5 for me is pretty much interchangeable. One of the greatest scorers ever, great defender, influenced so many people and players throughout his career. He is my favorite player of all time. He is unfortunately often misplaced in the top 3, top 2, or even put as the GOAT. As much as I love the guy, I hate saying that in the past tense, he's not in that conversation. Six, I have Bill Russell. Greatest winner, not only in NBA history, but in professional sports, period. The greatest defender ever in my view, a great rebounder, and an amazing 
leader. At five, I have Larry Bird. The only real negatives you can say for Bird is that he wasn't all that great of a defender and that his prime was just cut short. But at his peak, Bird could put the ball in the basket any way he wanted and was a great rebounder, an amazing passer, and his overall basketball IQ is possibly the best of any player ever. At four and three, I have Magic and Kareem pretty much tied. I go back and forth with these two all the time. Kareem has scored the most points in NBA history and he was also a damn good defensive player and rebounder but also a lot of his all-time stats come from longevity more so than actual talent. He won an insane amount of MVPs, but he also did that in what I would consider the weakest era in NBA history, as I said earlier. As for Magic, the greatest passer ever, and it's not close. Also a damn good score, and he led the Lakers to five championships in 11 seasons. And I'd honestly put him over Kareem because looking at those Showtime Lakers teams when both were in their primes, Magic was clearly the best player, so I guess I have Magic 3, Kareem 4. And then finally, I have LeBron at number 2 and Jordan at number 1. As talents, I think it's pretty damn close. I would probably give the edge to Jordan, but not by a large margin. However, accolades-wise, Jordan obviously kills him. If the circumstances were different, or even flipped, they would probably be in different spots for me, but they aren't. So Jordan is the GOAT, and LeBron is the clear and close second. So that is my top 50, but now let's look at what players were added from the NBA's original 50 greatest, and who got cut. For the additions, LeBron, Kobe, Steph, KD, Wade, Dirk, Garnett, Kawhi Leonard, Nash, Westbrook, Gary Payton, Allen Iverson, Dominique Wilkins, Paul Pierce, Reggie Miller, Ray, Allen, Giannis, and Tracy McGrady. And for the subtractions, Nate Archibald, Paul Arzen, Dave Bing, Bob Cousy, Billy Cunningham, Dave DeBouchery, Hal Greer, Sam Jones, Jerry Lucas, Pistol Pete, George Mikan, Earl Monroe, Bob Pettit, Willis Reed, Doff Shays, Bill Sharman, John Stockton, Nate Thurmond, Wes Unseld, Lenny Wilkins, and James Worthy. So that is the NBA's 50 greatest updated, according to me and me alone, so it's not really updated. You get what I mean. But yeah, I look forward to the comments section of this video. But that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music.